How would you like to learn how to take advantage of the most volatile trading period each day? Stick around for the video and I'll teach you how. My name is Steve Spencer. I've been a short-term trader for over 20 years. I'm a partner at a proprietary trading firm in New York City where we teach traders from scratch how to trade stocks, options, futures. If you're interested in a more in-depth instruction, click on the link on this video and we'll take you to a two-hour free workshop how to learn these topics more in depth. The topic for today's video is how to trade the open. This is a very volatile period and quite often you'll hear experienced traders say, don't, don't trade the open. Keep your hands on the keyboard. Things are too volatile. Things are too crazy. You can't control your risk. I am here to tell you, having been trading now for over 20 years, that I've seen dozens, if not more, traders successfully trade the open. It requires a certain level of skill, it requires a certain level of planning, but it absolutely can be done. And so let's go into some of the things that you need to do to successfully trade the open. But before we discuss those things, I first think we have to define what the open is. Sometimes when people talk about trading the open, they mean the first 30 minutes, or some traders mean the first 90 minutes. For the purposes of today's lesson, I'm talking about that first 15 to 20 minutes. It's a period that I call price discovery. In the first, 15, first 20 minutes or so, period of price discovery, what do I mean? I mean there really are no set trends. You see a lot of up and down action, not a lot of bids, not a lot of offers, and you see a lot of up and down, up and down. After 10 a.m. or so, things start to settle in a little bit more, and we start to see trends for the day develop. Now, why is it that things are so up and down in that first 20 minutes? Well, number one, there's not as many market participants, meaning people kind of step away from the market. They want to see what things look like in the first 20 to 30 minutes. And as they get a better idea if the market's going to be strong or the market's going to be weak, then they're willing to commit more capital and ranges will narrow, trends will develop. And so you'll see a lot of these stocks gyrating up and down without clear trends. Um, but at the same time, you'll have some of the most opportunistic entries, meaning you'll get the best opportunity to buy a stock that you're looking to get long or short a stock that you're looking to get short right in those first few minutes. And we're going to take a look at an example or two of that. At the same time, things are really dangerous. Uh, you know, they're dangerous because with less participants, there's less liquidity, you have to trade with less size, and sometimes stocks will skip prices. So you can't, you know, you're not going to have um, as well-defined small risk, and you'll have to react more quickly, make decisions more quickly. And then the other thing that really comes, um, that can be important, and what we see from top traders on our desk is tape reading is a very important skill in that first 20 minutes. What does tape reading mean? It means being able to watch the level two, um, watch a stock trade, watch the time and sales, um, and even, even on a very micro chart basis, even on you know, maybe a 15 second or so, um, chart, identify where the seller, where there's a large seller, where there's a large buyer, and do that very quickly. If you can develop that skill of tape reading in those first few minutes, that's going to help you control your risk and put on, put on some trades as well. And then the final thing is, what I, what I say to young traders on the desk is automation is a must. And why is automation a must? Because you can only watch when things are moving up and down and you know, there's a lot of action right on the open, you can only follow at most two or three stocks very closely. For myself personally, I can follow one stock really closely and kind of at the corner of my eye, maybe another stock. And the way that I take advantage of the other things that are setting up really well is via automation. And I'm gonna give you an example of how I do that as well. Let's take a look at a couple of the criteria we're looking for um, on these trades right on the open. Number one, I wanna identify key prices right on the open. Um, I want to be able to quickly identify um, buyers or sellers. I want to compress my time frame. What does that mean? It means that if a trade isn't working right away, I'm going to get out. It means that if a stock moves quickly in my direction, I'm going to take profits. Um, it means that I'm going to enter and exit several times in those first, first few minutes if I'm going to get um, in, until the trade is working or even taking profits. So that's, that's what it means to compress your time frame. So, Here's an example of something I mentioned a few minutes ago, the best entry. So you're looking at stocks before the market opens. In this particular chart right here, you're looking at a stock 
that ran up before the market opened from $8 all the way up to $12, $13. And then once it did that run up, I identified where it was supporting in the pre-market. And my bias on this stock was short. It was the second day in a row that it was, had been up. And, but for, for it to really come off, it had to drop that pre-market support. And so this is a really good example of the best entry happened right on the open, meaning the support level that was defined in the pre-market here, that little band below 12, the, comp, the second, the lower blue line is confirmation that the sellers are, are pushing it lower, happens right at the open. And what you can see is after five minutes, it was four or five dollars lower. So if you weren't ready to take that, take that entry below the, the pre-market support right on the, right on the open, you weren't going to get it again. And that's kind of, that's the flip side. You know, the more conservative trader is gonna wait for price confirmation at the open, meaning they wanna see that level, that support fail from the pre-market. But if they're waiting for that and then they're wait a few minutes, the stock is $3 lower. So th then what are they gonna do? They're gonna have to wait probably for another 20, 30 minutes to, for a consolidation period. I wanna give you an example of adjusting a game plan on the fly. So this particular stock, what we're looking at here is we are, we're identifying important prices based on the price action right on the open. And so what you're seeing here is this is a $195 stock. And on this particular one, I had my first resistance level was at 196. And I had, um, and I had 190, 195 as the inflection. And, and what does inflection mean on the, on the game plan notes? Inflection basically means if it's above a certain level, it might go up to our first resistance. If it's below a certain level, it might go down to our, our first support. And I'm going to look to trade it in the direction of where it is. If it's below the inflection, I'm gonna look for a spot to get short it. If it's above the inflection, I'm gonna potentially look for a spot to get long it. Now in this case, I had an inflection level, but I also had a bias where I was, I was I was, I was looking for a short opportunity. And you notice the first big green bar, it gets above. This is where we're looking at a one minute chart. Um, you can see on the bottom left there, it says one minute. Um, we're looking at the one minute chart and it quickly flashes above the inflection. Then it quickly flashes back down below the inflection. And then it quickly flashes back above. And so there's no clear direction. It's not holding above the inflection or below the inflection. And so what I'm gonna need to do is identify new prices when the market opens. And, and you can see in the first two minutes, I circled a spot for you there. What I saw on the tape was, you can't see it on the chart, but what I saw on the tape was there was a seller at 195.30 and it couldn't close above that level. So I made a mental note, if it pops back up to that level again, where it couldn't hold above, I'm going to short it there and my confirmation will be the support that I've highlighted with the blue line there, right on the open, the opening low. And so it pops back up there again, I short it, it drops back down very quickly and it's right back down at the bottom blue line. I'm covering most of my position. The reason is we're compressing time on the open and we know that things go up and down, up and down. I didn't know at this point, the first seven or eight minutes in, that eventually that big red bar was gonna happen a little bit further to the right where it broke cleanly below 194.50 and then at that point, the short trade was confirmed for me and on to, first, to support level one. The next example here is an example of there's a, a great opportunity, but at the same time, things are very dangerous. So in this particular chart, I've highlighted a few different things. Number one, I highlighted the two support um, levels from the morning game plan notes. 72 was support one, 70 was support two. In this case, the stock was gapping up a lot. Um, I was okay with playing it as a short on the open if it started to move down very quickly, um, but I did wanna make a long play um, if it's supported at S1 or S2. And so let's let, kind of drill down. Number one, the reason why there's danger is the first th thing that I circled, that big red bar, that's two and a half percent move in one minute. So these are one minute bars and the, and the stock has now moved, net, has moved over 2% in one minute. And so if I'm looking for initially a failure at 75 right on the open and I'm looking to see if it will drop to S1, and potentially then looking to see if it's gonna bounce and potentially take out the pre-market pre -market high, um, I don't have a lot of times to make, you know, a lot of time to make a decision there. In this case, if I see it fail at 75 and it immediately it drops 74, I may enter there because there's still, there's still $2 of downside to the first support, but at the same time, if I haven't entered right there, I'm probably not gonna do anything. I'm gonna wait to see if it supports at S1, and if it does, 
look for a green bar and enter on the long side. Um, and so like, look what happens when it comes back to S1 at 72. Um, number one, it, it immediately goes right through it and then comes back up. When you see a stock get to a price level, you're looking to see where there's going to be buyers. And when it first gets there, it overshoots. But on a low time frame, it very quickly gets back up to that level. That means other people are looking at that level potentially as support. And you can see I circled the, those two one minute bars there where it moves a little bit green, where it moves sideways. And then the next bar is a red bar. And, and at that point, it's, it's starting to fail. Um, and so I'm not going to play it on the long side because it hasn't been able to move sideways for a few minutes at, at the first S1. But at the same time, if it gets down to S2, um, that's where when I have something where I'm looking potentially on a long on a quick pullback in the open, I'm going to be more aggressive. Um, and in this case, I actually was moving over. I was trading a couple of other stocks. And the way to take advantage of this, if this isn't your primary stock at S2, is with what we call a script on our desk. And so we have our own proprietary trading platform. You can pretty much do whatever you want. You can have all sorts of scripts that play, trade off of price levels. They can trade off of VWAP. They can trade off of um, a moving average if, you, if that's kind of your trading style. Um, there's other there's trading platforms like TradeStation. You can do similar scripts to this. Um, but it's very important on the open when things are moving really quickly, especially on a volatile day where you might have four or five, six stocks that you've identified for good risk reward that you develop a script. So this to me, it's, you know, it looks at it and there's a lot of entries there, but it's not that complicated. It's basically I'm keying off of, I'm keying off of S2 and when the stock comes into S2, I'm starting to scale into the position 25% a little bit above S2, get a little bit closer to S2. And then finally right at S2, I'm putting on half the position. I'm putting in the stop, and this again, this is before I've even entered the position. I know exactly how I want to scale in, and in this case, if it ends up supporting at S2 like it did, I'll be in for my full position, and when it starts to bounce um, above 71, you can kind of see what my first target area was there. Um, it'll take off 25% of the position. That's how I tend to trade. I'll scale out 25% of the time, holding the last 25% when it gets to my top target, and then and, and go from there to see if it develops into a swing trade. Just to recap for you, on the open, the market is very fast moving. So you're either going to have to A, have a very well-defined plan. Well-defined plan is an example of what I just showed you with that script, understanding how I want it to scale in at S2. If you don't have a very well-defined plan, if you're just playing the momentum off of levels you've identified in the pre-market or the prior day support or resistance, you have to have a very tight time frame and tight risk. Meaning, if you enter against a level and it doesn't work right away, you're out. If you enter against a level and it moves a half of an ATR, you very quickly, you take profits. Technology assist, that's just what I just showed you. Pre-market prep, that's one of the earlier charts where I showed you right here, um, where you, the best entry is we know that I was looking for the stock to come off quite a bit. I identify the support in the pre-market, and when it takes that, that out, that support, I'm in right away. And then finally, those who can read the tape have the largest, largest edge. There's no, it's not a coincidence that the two most successful momentum directional traders on our desk, in addition to many other skills that they have, they learned how to read the tape in the first couple of years of their career. And as they did that, what it allowed them to do was kind of adjust their trading plans on the fly. It allowed them to put on very large size at, at prices where they identified large buyers or sellers. And it really allows you to roll, control your risk on these very large positions, meaning if you identify where there's a large buyer or seller and you're already in, in a position, you can scale up that position five or 10 times bigger because you know if that buyer or seller disappears, you can exit the majority of your position. And so these are kind of the things that are important for learning how to trade right in the open. And so this is my contact, this is my Twitter, this is our blog, this is my email if you have a trading question. If it's a good question, sometimes we'll actually put it up on the blog. Um, this concept and you know, identifying the right stocks to trade on the open, identifying um, how to trade these things in detail, go to the free trading workshop, it's two hours of content, myself, Mike Bellafuri, it's free. We go into very in-depth. And if you're interested in this sort of thing, it's a very good thing to check out. I hope you learned something.